Ascension forecast for Sunday, June 16th to Saturday, June 22nd. Okay, so last week we were wrapping up the final week of Venus and Mercury being in Gemini energy and technically we were wrapping up Gemini season. We have a lot coming at us this week. I'm trying my hardest not to jump all around here, but just know that this last week that we just had and the week that we're about to have is going to be very chaotic. Yes, I know. People are saying, oh, I don't know. We've already had enough chaos here in the Gemini energy. Well, I did warn you all that we were going to be very happy once Gemini season was coming to an end, especially Mercury, ruler of this Gemini energy, in his rulership of Gemini. My goodness, this has been the longest two-week transit I think we've had in a very long time, and a lot of that is because we're mentally overstimulated. The chaos, the craziness, the time warp, the acceleration of events definitely coming to a head as we enter into this week. But first, let me try to complete what happened last week. Yes, we were wrapping up Venus and Mercury's last full week in the Gemini energy. We were also building to the first quarter moon in Virgo that just took place in the wee hours here on June 14th. We also have Mercury and the Sun coming together for their superior conjunction, a chasm, if you will, that is a total reset of our headspace, of the, let's call it, confusion moving out, the clarity moving in for this week that we're about to dive into. Why, you may ask? Well, because as I've been saying, we were not going to arrive at our choice point, at our decision point, at our option point until the end of Gemini season. And Gemini season is coming to an end. This week, we have Venus and Mercury moving into Cancer energy on the exact same day, within hours of each other, the 17th to be specific. Now, outside of that particular energy shift, we have Venus and the Sun and Mercury coming towards the end of the Gemini degrees, which, of course, will square off with Neptune. We're going to talk about that little rant here in just a second, but it is very important to understand that a square is a tension point. It's a conflict point. It's a growing pain point. And with Neptune in his rulership in this Pisces energy at the 29th critical crisis degree that he's been sitting at for quite some time now, this is about the last part of this delusional illusion chapter coming to an end in order to return us to reality, in order to return us to the innocence of knowing, which of course we haven't been knowing. We've been in the age of Pisces under the confusion delusion type of programming that is coming to an end. The further we get into this age of Aquarius and the further we watch all of these planets kind of square off with Neptune, if they're eligible to do so, this is breaking down the illusion of the programming that we have been in. So I am going to rant about that in just a second, but I thought it was absolutely necessary that I include the squares with Neptune in the events of this week. Of course, we are closing out Gemini season, which means that we are diving into Cancer season popping off here on the 20th. That is the solstice energy. We're already kind of in this solstice window. And when Venus and Mercury move into the Cancer energy on the 17th, we're kind of getting fast forwarded into that solstice energy as well. That solstice energy is karmically locking us in, if you will, to the choice points that we will be arriving at as this Gemini energy comes to a close. And of course, if you've listened to the June energy forecast, you would know that we don't get very far into the solstice energy, into the Cancer season before we have the first of two full moon in Capricorns that are very much mirroring some of the indicators that we were given this time last year when we had back-to-back -back full moon in Capricorns. This is going to be the final go, the final hurrah, the removal, if you will, of the physical materialistic structure that we have been trying to collapse for many, many moons. And if I do say so myself, let's rewind back to 2008 when Pluto the great transformer himself through destruction and creation, resurrection, rebirth, moved into that Capricorn energy and has been 
basically dismantling the capitalistic industry as we see it. And of course, really kind of deconstruct the power that a small group of people have been holding on to. So things are definitely going to get interesting. So that sounds like a lot. It is a lot. We're about to do a deep dive into a very crazy, very chaotic week. Okay, and I know many of us are exhausted. and I know we're overstimulated. And I know we're just like, Wah, when is this going to end? Well, when we die, just to be honest, just to be frank. However, there are going to be some good spots, some easier weeks, some better transits, if you will, over the next coming of months. But right now, in Gemini season, typically speaking, our minds are about to explode. We're exhausted, mind, body, and soul, as we kind of wrap up where it is that we're shifting our mind space, seeing new ideas, seeing new perspectives, seeing this new version of self emerge. And of course, having to deconstruct and hard, really examine that hardwired programming in our brains, again, Gemini energy, in order to flip the script into something better, something supportive of this new version of self. So I have many things that I want to touch on. But of course, let me just take a moment to do some homework, starting with the thank yous. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank you for the continued love and support. And especially in times such as these where the collective is coming to another major pivot point, it is super, super important that we all unify, that we all get in alignment with one another, that we all love and support each other as we try to focus on the highest timeline, the best outcome that we could possibly maneuver the collective into. So thank you very much for being here for the continued love and support. We're going to get through this next bumpy chapter of the ride. Cancer season is almost upon us, which means that over the next couple of days, you will see the Cancer season e-guide be available for download. Of course, we do still have a couple of events still in this Gemini season. So if you do have your Gemini season e-guide downloaded and available to you, we still have a couple of things to go before shifting over into that Cancer season e-guide, but it will be available over the next couple of days for your downloading pleasure. These particular guides have been written to kind of help navigate you through the energy shifts. Whether you're interested in astrology or not doesn't really matter. They're written for the, I'm gonna call it beginner, and they are written for the more advanced type of astrology interest as well. It's not so much about learning about astrology as much as it is about understanding the energy shifts that come with it and how it impacts your life. So a very helpful resource out there for your downloading pleasure in the next couple of days. Now, I've already mentioned that we have a full moon in Capricorn coming at us, first of two. So of course, there will be a brand new moon guide episode coming at you over this next week as well. I would say, and I know I always say that this is a very important moon event because I believe that they all are seeing up the moon events, good, bad, or otherwise, really help to push us on our soul's evolution. Um, when we have back-to-back -back moon events taking place in the same sign, one at a one degree, a beginning chapter, and one at a 29th degree, a critical karmic degree, um, I would say pay special attention to that, especially Capricorn energy being about karma, being about manifesting energies, the great manifester of the zodiac, of course, and Capricorn energy being about the materialistic physical realm. We're going to have some things removed in a big way, especially on the greater, grander global stage, but affecting us in our individual realm as well. Again, why I put so much time into creating these Moon Guide episodes, because it is very, very important, especially at this stage of the Ascension game, that we get a grip on what it is that we're meant to be doing, focusing on, really aligning with, with each moon energy. Okay, so with the homework out of the way, let's talk about a couple of things. Now, I am going to try and stay as organized as possible, but let me just tell you, there's a lot of chaos and craziness going on in my mental plane. Um, again, I've been talking about how, you know, there's so much air energy, there's so much mercurial energy that it feels like a mercury retrograde. 
I know in last week's forecast, I likely misspoke and said that the first quarter moon in Virgo was popping off on the 16th. I don't know why I had that there. I know better. I even published a full-blown calendar that I was looking at that said it was the 14th, yet I said it was the 16th. My bad. Super sorry about that. Um, but this is the kind of thing that we've been dealing with. And we're short-circuiting in our brains because of the amount of information, the amount of air energy that has been thrown at us throughout this Gemini season, especially when Mercury, the ruler of Gemini season, in his rulership in Gemini energy. Um, if you want to go back and listen to that particular forecast, I did talk about how at the end of Mercury's transit in Gemini energy that we were going to be so thankful for moving into Cancer energy, even though that's going to be a doozy in a different way. Mostly because our, our brains are going to be burnt out at that time. And I don't know about y'all, but I am exhausted. My mental plane is just almost kaputs. Uh, I do not feel as smart as I know that I am because I am saying some really dumb things and I am forgetting some very important things. And again, the amount of pressure on our headspace is just almost paralyzing at this particular juncture. So I, for one, am going to be very happy to see Gemini season come to an end. I'm also very anxious to kind of dive into the solstice portal so that we know what we're dealing with. That is essentially, let me put it to you this way. We entered into Gemini season. We all had a deck of cards. We all threw them up in the air. As Gemini season has been unfolding, we're waiting for the cards to actually fall. The cards will not fully have fallen until the end of Gemini season. That's when we know what hand we're dealt. That's when we know what cards are flipped up, what we're working with. That's what gets locked in under the solstice energy. Now, let me also give you a little bit of disclaimer. Cancer energy is no joke, okay? Just think of when the moon is in her rulership in cancer energy. Everybody loses their shit. We're whiny, criny babies, right? We get kind of introverted. We get all clammed up. We start romanticizing the past. Everybody is a little bit weepy, if I do say so myself, because I've noticed patterns and behaviors. And let me tell you, if you pay attention to the moon cycle, you would know that when the moon is in her rulership and cancer energy, everybody falls apart. Big piles of goo, big puddles of mush. That is what we can expect moving into cancer season. Like I previously mentioned, we have Venus and Mercury moving into cancer energy prior to the solstice. Okay, we get like three days of Venus and Mercury sitting in the Cancer energy. Let me just say that right now, I wanna give you a little bit of a rundown. Again, I'm trying to stay organized, but it's probably not gonna happen, so stay with me. Um, I'm gonna give you a rundown of the interesting highlights, let's call them, on each individual day of this week. So obviously, Sunday, the 16th, we're gonna have a lot of pressure on our headspace, on our heart space, there's gonna be a lot of miscommunication, a lot of misunderstandings, especially where relationships are concerned. Why is that, you may ask? Well, because Venus and Mercury are nearing the final degrees of Gemini energy. And we have Venus first, first kind of, you know, initiating this little train that I kind of talked about. Venus is going to get into the boxing ring and square off with Neptune first and foremost, breaking down the illusion, if you will, that we've had about our happiness, our joy, our safety, our security, our stability, especially where relationships are concerned. Any day that we have with planets nearing the 29th critical degree of any sign, there's going to be added pressure. And I know don't, I here I go with the, with the mumble again. I don't know about you all, but I don't really want any more pressure on the head space or on the heart space, but it's coming at us. Monday, the 17th is going to be a major day. First of all, um, we're moving out of the moon being in Libra into the moon being in Scorpio. So you want to talk about shadow work? You want to talk about a major change, a major transformation in our inner realm? You want to talk about a huge intense pressure on where it is emotionally speaking that we're going through some growing pains in order to come out a merged point of self let me just talk about the fact that the gemini energy the gemini season has us divided even within thyself the merging comes with the water energy starting with the moon moving into scorpio venus moves into cancer energy while the moon is void 
Okay, what does that kind of indicate? You want to talk about some major heart activations coming at us. Mercury then gets into the boxing ring, squares off with Neptune, really deconstructing the way that we were thinking, the way that we understood us, ourselves, our lives to be. Again, we are crumbling the, let's call it delusion and confusion, to return us to a real raw sense of innocence. Again, cancer energy, the inner child. This is where we're going with this. We're coming out of the mental plane and doing a deep dive into the feels. Mercury moves into cancer energy after that square with Neptune. And then Mercury conjuncts Venus because of course they're in this cancer energy together. There's a lot going on. Now we're going to get like I said, maybe one day of adjustment, that would be Tuesday, um, we're going to have a little bit of an adjustment. However, there is a tough interaction taking place on Tuesday between Venus and Pluto. So Venus fresh in this water energy of cancer, where we're, you know, feeling the feels that we were thinking our way through, through the Gemini energy, suddenly things are going to intensify in that heart space. Wednesday, we're moving into the very last day of Gemini season. The solstice energy is sucking us in to this new karmic chapter. Again, the sun nearing the final degrees of this Gemini energy is going to intensify a lot of topics, a lot of themes. That's when the choice points, the options, the decisions are literally, I'm not going to say written in stone because is anything ever written in stone? No, not really. However, more solidified than ever before, all this confusion, all these options, all this teeter-totter, seesaw, back and forth that we've been doing throughout Gemini season is going to come to a very intense, very pressurized, very abrupt ending point. Just when the moon shifts into Sag energy, giving us the greater, grander picture, the greater, grander perspective, a deeper meaning of why it is that we had to go through all the things that we just went through. And then... Thursday, the 20th happens. This is when the sun shifts into Cancer energy, but not before squaring with Neptune. Again, the sun, life force energy. In the Gemini energy, division. Two different choice points, two different versions of self, two different ways of looking at things, all of the division. Squaring off, getting into the boxing ring, having a very intense growing pain with Neptune. This is like spiritual cleansing. This is like closing the door on all of the fluffy false mis misinformation that we've been under the influence of. This is us like removing the pain and trauma wounds. That is a very interesting dynamic seeing that we are moving into cancer season, which is going to bring up all the past pain and trauma from our generational events and experiences for that healing journey to take place. The sun is going to be shifting into cancer energy shortly after squaring off with Neptune. That is the solstice. That is the halfway point of our year thus far. And then we dive into the full moon in Capricorn on the 21st. And so that is, again, the first of two, which means that we're going to have our first full moon, a full illumination of the realm, the reality, the system, the structure, the foundation that we're now working with, that we now have to work on removing parts and aspects of because they're blocking the path, the direction that now we're fully aware, we fully realized that we need to walk. And again, that information come in hot and heavy at us towards the end of Gemini season, locking in the karmic playing ground, let's call it, that we're going to be working on until the fall with that solstice energy. So if that sounds like a very intense week, you would be right. We have a lot of growing pains that we have to go through, especially spiritually speaking, kind of breaking away from the limiting belief system, the false understanding of the world in which we live in, finally letting go of the division within self, finally letting go of that old version of self and that old realm and reality that that old version of self has created. And therefore we are busting into new foreign territory, which should be exciting at this point, but semi-scary at the same time. We just know that we can't continue doing what it is that we've been doing. We want better, we deserve better. And in order to get better, we have to do different. And so all of that confusion that we're currently sitting in is going to clear 
and we are going to be thrown into a new playing field, a new battlefield, a new stage of the game, new karmic chapter, new timeline, new version of self. And let me just remind you, cancer season is about foundations, the foundation of the family that we came from, the foundation of self that we're currently building in, and the foundation of the future that we want to be kind of bringing to life at this time in order for us to be in alignment with our higher selves. The Cancer energy sits across from the Capricorn energy, both representing the axis of safety, security, and stability. The Cancer energy merges the division between the parts of self that we've experienced in this Gemini season, merges them back together. And from that, we create a new foundation of how it is that we feel. Gemini season has been thinking our way through how we feel. And then in cancer season, we get thrown into the deep end. And now we have to feel everything that we thought we were feeling through the Gemini energy. We are merging those parts of self back together, creating a new foundation of self, a new foundation of emotionally realizing where it is that safety, security, stability is the name of the game. We want to essentially kind of rip open the wounds, which we should have been well aware of in this Gemini energy as we kind of created more time, energy, space, and distance away from the old version of self, leaning more and more into the new version of self. We should be fully aware of the wounds that are still alive and well in us. And then when we move into that cancer energy, that is where the inner child work begins. This is because we've reached new levels of awareness. We've reached new levels of consciousness. And therefore, we can examine some of the painful parts of our upbringing, our childhood from a different set of eyes. Therefore, releasing the old ways of understanding why certain things had to happen in order to mold us into the beings that we currently are each and every single day kind of becoming more and more stronger more and more powerful in the version of self that we were always meant to be this is us meeting ourselves for the first time in a new way from a new set of eyes but we have to build the mental plane mercury heart space venus in a new way they have to be aligned which they are moving into cancer energy together they are aligned, our heart and our head working together. Now we have to solidify the foundation of our inner realm that we will now be operating from as we build this new realm, this new reality. So the moon throughout all of this week, the moon starts in Libra and energy, right? Again, very indecisive, very focused on relationships, very codependent, very needy. We are attempting to bring balance and compromise and harmony into what has been a state of chaos in most of relationship dynamics as well, but also within ourselves, the division between our heart and our head. And that division has been very extreme while we've been moving through this Gemini energy that has everything to do with the division of the mental plane right? We've been so disconnected from our physical bodies, from our emotions, from our intuition, because the Gemini energy has us fully immersed in intellect, the two different hemispheres of the brain, the two different ways of looking at things, perceiving things, understanding, communicating, and expressing things. That's where the division lies. But we're going to be jammed back, back into our physical form. We're going to feel all the things that we weren't feeling while we were intellectualizing our physical realm. Well, in the Gemini energy. So we're about to get stuff back into our physical body and we are going to feel every ounce of it as uncomfortable as it may be. By the time we end the week, we're going to be in Capricorn energy. And that Capricorn energy brings us back into the physical realm in a very abrupt kind of way. So again, that full moon at a one degree in Capricorn is feeding off of the beginning chapter that we initiated this time last year with the full moon in Capricorn at a zero degree. We're going to be kind of building off of that, initiating what needs to be cleared away from our physical realm to free up the space for us to actually progress to, towards a new vision, goal, and dream. Furthering that, July 21st, exactly a month away from that full moon in Capricorn on the 21st here of June, we are going to have the second full moon in Capricorn at 29 degrees, critical karmic degree. That is going to be the final hurrah. 
the final closing door on all of the aspects in the materialistic realm that is not supporting, not encouraging this new version of self in the realm of reality in which we're trying to build ourselves towards. And so it is going to be a continuation. The story is not going to be ending under this full moon in Capricorn. It's the beginning of the end. And we are going to feel that in cancer energy in every ounce of our being. So as I previously mentioned, the squaring off with Neptune, the captain of confusion and delusion, if you will, but also the captain of our healing, of our spiritual quest, of our higher self, of our creativity. We are coming into a tension point, a growing pain point, because we are breaking away from the goals, the visions, the creative life force energy that the old version of self was using under the influence of the false illusion programming system, which means that disclosure is coming at us as I think it already has here in Gemini energy. Again, if you wanna go back and kind of just learn about all these new concepts, these new topics and themes, this new conversation around a lot of the things that stemmed off of the 2020 situation, if you will. We, you know, not that I wanna get into global events because that just opens up a can of worms that I don't really wanna talk about. But, you know, we we're seeing the change of currency, the world's currency take place like you know we talked about it months ago with the BRICS nation kind of being formed well now we're at a very pivotal point funny how that is in Gemini season pivotal point of change taking a very extreme path and direction over the one that was established this is going to mean a lot of different domino effects for the global stage that we are currently watching in our own individual lives of course that energy needs to be alchemized correctly through the physical body you're going to be picking up on a lot of heaviness a lot of weight a lot of craziness a lot of chaos from the collective this is why you should be doing your shadow work for those of us that have been doing the work that can kind of you know be strong enough to take on the energy of others and channel it through our physical form and apply our information wisdom and knowledge to it and do the breathing work and do all of the healing techniques in order to alchemize that energy into something better something brighter to return it back to the collective so that we all don't lose our shit that is the main mission especially over the course of this week that is our mission we are moving out of illusion and returning ourselves back to a reality of innocence. That's where the cancer energy is going to take us. But that cancer energy, first of all, very defensive, very protective. Well, that sounds like a recipe for disaster, especially seeing as we just arrived at a new idea, new topic, new theme, new path, new choice point, new direction. And then we're going to move into cancer energy that is totally attached to the past. Hmm, that's going to be an interesting dynamic for many of us to navigate especially seeing as we are very defensive and protective of what it is that we've already built, what it is that we've already created, but what happens when what we've built and what we've created it no longer aligns with what it is that we want for ourselves, who it is that we now are, what it is that we want to achieve. Well, how are we supposed to let go of an ego attachment that is very much being pushed in our face because of the fear that we're having by letting things go and actually moving on to new foreign territory? That's where the waterworks come in. If you don't understand that we get romanticizing and nostalgia when we start moving into this cancer energy, you have a whole shit ton of emotion coming at you. The waterworks are going to be plentiful. This is a purge. Okay, let me remind you that cancer energy is a cardinal sign. Cardinal energies are the point of initiating great change the oxymoronic fact that great change in cancer energy that is attached to the past well that sounds like a battle royale for our inner realms of emotion you best bet that this is going to test us in ways to see how strong we actually are over our headspace over our heart space and over our ability to actually nip that old programming in the bud and rewrite flip the script in a better higher self programming that will have us basically releasing with love the parts of self the parts that we built the, the parts that we've already created with love we gotta let it go the time has come the time has passed we gotta let it go there's a lot of surrendering that we have to learn how to do 
and that is going to come full force at us in cancer energy so yeah there's a cardinal element there of initiating something new especially off the choice point that we're arriving at at the end of gemini season but then cancer energy being so attached to the past how are we ever going to let go of the things that we become overly attached to that is going to be the struggle but cancer energy is both the inner child realm and the feminine divine realm it is ruled over by the moon we all know that the moon rules over our emotional programming our unconscious selves and so there is going to be a lot of i'm going to say waves crashing upon us to purge a lot of the emotional energy that got built up because we weren't paying attention to it through gemini season again we were all stuck in the logical practical intellect we didn't give much value to our emotions nor did we give a much value to our intuition that is coming back for a vengeance here in the cancer season i also want to remind you that cancer season is about understanding where it is that we've come from a lot of generational wounds come up for healing through cancer season again inner child feminine divine energy relationship with the mother this is about nurturing ourselves back to a place of safety security and stability within our inner realm understanding how it is that we've gotten here understanding where it is that we want to go from here this is again really kind of compounding with the whole you know squaring off with neptune kind of creating that confusion delusion into a form of innocence it's also taking the confusion and providing a conclusion to the confusion and so we are going to get highly uh, I'm going to say thrown into the emotional depths, the emotional realm, because we have a new awareness. We have a new programming in our brains from Gemini season. We're able to understand things from a level that we weren't able to reach thus far. Now we have to get the heart space in alignment with the head space so that the new programming of this new version of self can actually start pushing us into new paths, into new directions, into new projects. So does this sound exhausting? 100% yes. So many people are just so exhausted. Um, not only in our mental plane, but like physically, you know, the energy fluctuations. Some days we are full of piss and vinegar, manic, if you will. The next day we can hardly even get out of bed. We knew this was going to happen. We talked about this for weeks in as we kind of approached this Gemini energy and as we started dipping our toe in it. The Gemini energy has us doing one thing one day and then the complete opposite the next day. And that in itself is exhausting. We have to reach a balance point. It does not feel good to go from one extreme to the next. Thus, why we are low on energy. Thus, why we are exhausted. Talk about exhausted. We're so exhausted that we can't even sleep right. You know, one day we're sleeping for like solid God knows how many hours, I'm not even going to say it because my standard of sleep, like when I get more than four hours, I take that as a win. There's some people out there sleeping like eight to 10 hours. I am so jealous. I cannot even tell you that would be amazing. Um, but our sleep state is fluctuating as well as we knew it would with the Gemini energy. The Gemini energy doesn't allow us to get very deep in our sleep state because we have to stay very aware of the physical body connected to the intellect. When you enter into a deep REM sleep, that is when your intellect shuts down and we're no longer aware of our physical form. And that's when we can like astral travel. That's when, you know, our body goes through the, the repairment, if you will. Um, that it needs to go through in order to get us through our day. Well, we're not sleeping that deep. We're not moving into those REM stages. We're not able to move into the other realms, the other dimensions, because our intellect is overactive. The electricity popping off in our brainstem has not stopped. This, and again, another reason why we are exhausted. Even our dream state, if you're lucky enough to have dreams, if you're lucky enough to sleep long enough to actually have a dream, congratulations, you're doing way better than a lot of us. Um, but even that dream state is wild. Like it's just like mundane, you know, concepts. There's, there's no real crypticness to it. It's not really that interesting. Not even very much fun being had in other realms. It's very mundane uh very routine if i do say so myself um heads up when cancer season hits uh first of all it's going to feel like you literally can't wake up 
from a dream. Um, the dreamscape is going to be very emotional because, of course, our unconscious selves needs us to process some of the pain and trauma that our waking selves are unable to process. And things are going to get super deep. And with that comes deep sleep. And yes, we are going to repair ourselves from what it is that we weren't able to repair ourselves from while well, in this Gemini energy. But we're going to be dealing with a whole different kind of sleep state and dream state because it's going to be so over emotional. We're going to have so many spiritual meetings with people from our past and people that have passed over that it's going to be emotionally draining. Gemini season is mentally draining. Cancer season, emotionally draining. So be prepared. Uh, because we're talking about the past, once we dive into this cancer energy, this week I feel like we're going to have old injuries resurface, meaning there's going to be more attention brought to uh, some of the aches and pains that we've been dealing with for years that we haven't really paid much attention to. This is kind of giving kudos, if you will, to the physical body on how much we've been able to heal, fix, and repair over the course of however many years it's been since you had this particular injury. But again, a reminder that the past is coming back for us, this new version of self, with this new ability to see things from the observer type of perspective from a totally different set of eyes. We do not heal in a linear fashion. Everything we do is on a spiral. Just when you think you've grown up and grown out of certain habits, certain behavior, certain people, they come back in a different form to see how much you've grown. This is very much the time in the season in Cancer Energy where the past comes back. I'm going to say to haunt us, but basically it's to teach us how far we've actually come. It may feel like it's haunting us because again, once we close the door on something and we've done the work to mentally and emotionally repair ourselves from that pain and trauma, we want to be done with it. It jolts us back into the old version of self when old people, old things, old topics and themes reappear. But this is to help us see how far we've come. So remember that when the past comes knocking on your door. Okay, so I talked about how the extreme choice points, the extreme options and decisions and paths and directions that we've been trying to choose from over Gemini season, how they're finally coming to a head so that we lock that particular karmic chapter in, that timeline in, those contracts in, under the solstice energy. And just so you're aware, from the solstice to the fall equinox that pops off when the sun moves into Libra and energy, that is a whole karmic chapter. And so the, the next karmic chapter that we're moving into is going to take us right into the fall. Heads up, the fall, wham, bam, thank you, ma'ams us with another eclipse season when all of these planets are going to be coming out of their retrograde. So this karmic chapter that we're locking in under the solstice is going to be a very important one because it's the first phase of a brand new chapter that this version of this new version of self has at its, I'm going to say, it's opportunity to experience first and foremost. This is going to be the first karmic chapter that we've had with the new version of self 100% in control. So that's going to be a very interesting dynamic as well. Um, but with those extremes come chaos. With those extremes come pressure. With those extremes comes a time warp that we're not necessarily ready, equipped, ready, prepared for. Uh, but it's coming at us nonetheless. So let's talk about a lot of the, I'm going to call it childhood memories, childhood injuries, childhood flashbacks, pain and trauma, mommy issues, all of those things coming back. Um, especially when we have Venus and Mercury first kind of dip their toe in this cancer energy prior to the sun moving into cancer. That's our heart and our head in alignment in the cancer energy. But now it's almost like we're doing a life review before we die. And I know that sounds kind of creepy, but that's kind of the vibe that it gives me is that the minute that we kind of get into this cancer energy, our heart and our head are going to be building a brand new foundation of where it is that we're operating from. But we also have to purge out those old memories, purge out those old flashbacks. We have to create room. We're an operating system. OK, so if you're already maxed out and there's no space, disk space left on your on your hard drive, we have to eliminate some files in order for the new program to be able to function. That's where we're at. We're, we're 
if you call the Gemini season the defragging part of removing all the fragmented parts of the files or fragmented parts of the programs that are no longer operating and those old files that need to be rewritten, we're defragging in the Gemini system, we're upgrading the operating system in Cancer season when everything is merged back together and we have to create a new foundation to actually operate from. So that's going to happen. This is going to be a dramatic shift from our headspace to our heart space, from living in the cerebral energy of thought to the actual feeling sensation of the physical body. This is like intellect to intuition. Uh, we've been thinking, now we have to feel about it. And that, to most people, does not feel good. So let's talk about some of the physical symptoms. First of all, your solar plexus, right underneath your rib cage. We are going to have some pressure there. We're gonna have some bubble guts. We're gonna have some heartburn. We're gonna have some acid reflux. We're gonna have gas coming at us from both ends here, just to be cute about it, okay? Um, I want you to think of all the air energy that we've been sitting in with Gemini. And then what happens when you apply air to water? You get bubbles, right? and things are gonna get bubbly. They're gonna get bubbly in our bodies, starting with bubble guts, starting with gas bubbles, starting with this air bubble underneath your ribs that you're just not going to get rid of with you know normal methods, let's call it. We also wanna talk about the bubbles that are happening in our headspace. It's gonna feel like Rice Krispie popcorn popping off in your headspace, why? Because we're burnt out mentally, especially when we close the door on this Gemini season, we are burnt out. We need that, you know, mental plane to kind of, you know, bubble off, to kind of die down, to calm its ass down, to soothe that energy down. We need a little bit of time. The bubbles are going to be popping off. Now, bubbles on the skin, skin eruptions. Maybe you're getting blisters. Maybe you're just, you know, erupting with pimples on certain areas of your face. Maybe you have a rash. Maybe you have bug bites. Doesn't matter. Think of bubbles and bubbles on the skin. Think of bubbles in your sinuses. Now, I know this sounds really weird, but you know how sometimes it feels like you get water up your nose when you haven't even been in water? You're going to have that sensation in your sinus area. That's your third eye coming online. This is, again, the defragging, the new operating system coming in. And so our, our the air has dried us out. We have dry mouth. So it's going to taste like morning breath for the most part of the day because there's a lot of air. Um, we've been dried out in our sinus cavity, in our nose. Um, yes, there's been a couple of pop-offs with phlegm and congestion being released from our lungs and from our sinus cavity, like runny noses and all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, it's been dry. So dry that we may even have a couple of nosebleeds popping off this week or, you know, nose soreness that could be leading to bleeding. There is this element where just, you know, we're changing. I want, I want you to think of, you know, when you're climbing a mountain and the air becomes thinner and the impact that that has on your breathing and on your face and on your skin and on your sinuses and your lips and, you know, the, the moisture content in your body. That's kind of what we're doing here. We've reached the peak of the air. The air is so thin. The air is too much. And we're going to basically come down the mountain very, very quickly here. And we're doing a deep dive in the ocean in order to replenish ourselves of a lot of the moisture that we've been losing through Gemini season. And so that in itself is going to create a lot of change in our skin. We're, we're going to see dry patches. We're going to see, you know, our hair change as well. The oils in our hair change. We're going to see sunspots or different, let's call them moles or uh indicator marks on your face change the eyes are going to get a little bit more glimmery again the changing of the guard the changing of the soul the changing of the self there's going to be noticeable physical differences especially when you look at your face you know through the gemini season we were talking about how one side of the face looked different over the other cancer season merges those parts back together and we start to pack on a little bit of water weight so we're going to see puffiness in the face, probably in the fingers too, likely around the belly. Uh, a lot of that is going to be water weight, but don't use it as an excuse to overindulge in comfort foods. The minute that we move into cancer energy, 
We're going to want to stuff our face with comfort foods. And many of us are going to overindulge, put on some weight. We're going to blame it on the water weight. Technically speaking, when we move into Leo season, that sun energy, that fire energy will burn off the water weight, but it has a harder time burning off physical weight fat, you know, that we're putting on due to overeating. So yes, there is a balance that we're going to have to strike there. Creature comforts are the name of the game in cancer season because we want to stick to what is old, tried, tested, true, and familiar. We want to nurture ourselves, but nurturing ourselves can lead to a little bit of an issue where we kind of, you know, take it to the extreme, which we tend to do. And then we have to deal with the repercussions of that. Just know that we are going to have a dramatic shift in our mood, in our attitude, in our perspective, and in our physical form as we move into this cancer energy. And here's really one weird one that I don't think we've talked about in a while because we haven't had it in a while, but your smell. Okay, so I'm not saying B.O., okay, but like let's call it B.O., like normalized B.O. When people talk about body odor, they think, oh, the stinky kind. We all have a smell. We all have natural pheromones. We all have, you know, this natural essence of our body oils, of our body essence. We all have a smell. Well, that smell is changing. Why? Because the new version of self is coming out to play for the first time solo quest. Okay. We are merging together the division that we have been experiencing within ourselves and that merging, that pressure, that water energy let me just say water energy is very cleansing, very purifying first, and then it is very emotional second, and then it's transformative, right? And that's the whole point of water energy. Water is the only element that can take on all states, a gas, a solid and a liquid and, and regenerate through those particular cycles, depending on the external influences that are pressurizing them to take on a certain form. And so You know, there's going to be a lot of change, a lot of progress, but it's also going to feel like we are taking a couple of steps back in that cancer energy as well, because the past is trying to reel us back in. We've done so much work within ourselves. We've done so much work in our mental plane, in our emotions, in our soul, in our spirit that we're exhausted. And what do you want to do when you're exhausted? Well, you sure as hell don't want to continue to fight for new What you want to do is you want to curl up in a ball and stuff your face and watch movies. That's what you want to do. And for many of us, we are going to be spending the first couple of days um, of cancer season doing just that. Not to mention, we are going to be full stop, fully aware of our physical form because of that full moon in Capricorn. So you want to talk about the heaviness. You want to talk about the weight. You want to talk about feeling 500 pounds trying to run underwater. That is going to be the introduction, let's call it to cancer season, which does not sound good, does not feel favorable. Let's talk about the fact that our intuition comes back online in a much stronger way. Let's talk about our ability to understand where boundaries are needed, kind of come back in a very strong way. And building, we are building a brand new foundation, starting with our intuition and our emotions. Again, we've thought as much as we could possibly think here in this Gemini energy, Now we have to feel our way through the goal, the vision, the path, the plan, the strategy that we came up with under the intellectual understanding that the Gemini season lends us. So again, we're about to do a deep dive here. We've been climbing this tall ass ladder, you know, those big ladders that they do the deep dive off of. We've been just, you know, going up. And just seeing from bigger, greater, grander perspectives, looking down on all the people that don't even look like people anymore. They look like ants. We're looking down at this huge ass pool that once looked very huge when we were down sitting next to it that suddenly just feels like a little, you know, can of beans that we're going to have to accurately, precisely dive into. Everything becomes a little bit skewed up there. The air is thinner up there. We become a little bit more dizzy a little bit more confused. How the hell did we even get up here in the first place? And now we're just supposed to trust the universe to dive from this height and land in this little can of water? Well, we're going to have to surrender. We're going to have to trust the cosmos because doing a deep dive in that can of water is going to expand the emotional programming that now needs to align with the expansion of the mental programming that we are wrapping up, bringing to a conclusion here 
in Gemini season. So guys, I know that was all over the place. I know we kind of went on a couple adventures within that one blurb. I know um, we have a lot of seesawing energy back and forth going on here, but I think I covered all in which I was planning to cover. Uh, we're definitely in for a week. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I have never sugarcoated anything. I'm not about to start now. Um, pay attention to the Schumann resonance. Uh, pay attention to global events. Pay attention to your body. You are a energetic barometer, okay? So when you're feeling something popping off in the physical form, make the connection to the energetics creating that particular manifestation in the physical form and understand what's going on behind the physical body. There is an energy there. There is a cycle coming to an end. Again, the programming coming to an end, a new chapter, new book, new movie about to kind of commence here, but we still don't know how the ending is actually going to go. It is going to happen so quick. It is going to be so unexpected it is going to throw us such curveballs that it may actually take the better part of the first week of cancer season to even understand what we chose, what we aligned with, what we locked in, what we're doing, what we're pursuing, what we're building, what we're creating. It's going to take some time. So with that being said, we are warriors. Here's your reminder. We are warriors. We chose to be alive at this particular time because we knew we were strong enough to handle it. We have to unify. We have to keep our mind on the prize, so to speak. We have to join energetic arms as we approach the ending of this particular battlefield and as we're being kind of detoured and redirected to the next battlefield that we will be fighting on. We can do this. We're all in alignment. We're thinking positive. We are of the vibration of our highest potential. And this too shall pass. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I send you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.